Today we're going to talk a little bit about tryouts. I had a, one of my coaching lab members send me an email saying, hey, I'm a first time head coach. Do you have anything that can help me out with my tryouts? So as I was sending stuff off his way, I thought, you know, if he's got these questions, but there's others out there that do as well. So even though we're a little bit away from tryouts, I want to make sure that everybody's prepared and you can kind of just get yourself, you know, mentally ready for whatever it is you have to do in your tryouts. The first thing that I'm looking for when I hold tryouts are what I call the big three. Those things are going to be, does a player have enough skill to compete at our level? The second is going to be, do they have the athleticism to compete at our level? And then finally, how do they play the game? And all three of those things are going to be the biggest decision makers in whether or not they make the team. So if they have enough skill, but they're not a good enough athlete, then that could be enough to not keep them. If they're a good enough athlete with not enough skill, that could also be enough to keep them from making the team. So there's got to be a balancing act in those first two. The third one is how do they play the game? Here I'm looking for intangibles. I'm looking for their understanding of the game. Uh, and this is something that sometimes a player can really surprise you. They don't do great in the skill and athleticism part, but they know how to go out there and they have a savviness about their game that they can kind of do some things that other players can't do. They just have that innate ability. So fitting all three of those together, when you get all three in a player, you know that that's somebody you definitely want to keep. Now things like coachability and being a good teammate, that can be really hard to determine in a two-day tryout. So if you're at a high school or middle school level, a lot of times you see the kids in school or you've seen them coming up to the program, so you have an idea about how coachable they are or what type of teammate they'll be. Uh, when I coached at the community college level and we had an open tryout, I didn't know a lot about players who were trying out. So we're only looking for a couple of spots, but it was important for me to do a little bit of work behind the scenes, you know, send off an email, make a phone call to learn about players that fit the big three. But we also wanted to know about those, those subtle things, the coachability and being a good teammate. So that can be a little bit harder if you don't know anything about those players. But a lot of times you can do just a little bit of homework and figure that out. Then there are things that you have to take into consideration about how much gym space do you have? How many courts do you have? How many basketballs will you have? How many hoops are available to you? How many coaches are you gonna have at the tryout? And then finally, how many players are gonna be trying out? The more of those questions you can answer, the easier it is for you to plan that practice or that tryout for those couple of days. If you don't know how many players are gonna be there, it can get really difficult to make a practice plan that's gonna use your time effectively. If you have 12 players there and you're only keeping 12 because you have a small school, then there may not be much decision. You're just starting out is kind of your tryout is your first practice. If you have 40 kids coming and you're only going to be keeping 12, that changes things a whole lot. So making sure that you have all of that information beforehand or as much of it as you can get is really going to help things go a lot smoother. Now in terms of drills, of course we do some fundamental drills some things that are on air, but those don't tell you a whole lot about a player unless they're really deficient in a certain area. I've seen players who come in and they do the dribbling drills or the shooting drills and they look superb. Then you put a defense on them and they can't translate those drills or those skills into games. So I like to use the, the drills as a way to warm up, as a way to get some teaching points across. But what I'm ultimately trying to get is to see if they can translate those skills into the game. So things like small-sided games, playing two-on-two, -two, playing three-on-three -three games, or even getting into maybe some four-on-four, -four, where the ball is going to be touched by a lot of different players and we're going to get a lot of different actions. That's what's going to help me evaluate them the most. So getting them in those situations is much more important to me than just having them go through shooting or dribbling or passing drills where there's no defense. Because a lot of players can do that stuff and it doesn't help me evaluate them at all. I stay away from the five on five to a certain degree. Now we've got to play it because that's how the game's gonna be played. But in a tryout, there are certain players in that tryout that will take more shots, that'll have the ball in their hands more often and it doesn't always get around to everybody. So it can be hard to evaluate a player you know nothing about because they don't ever touch the ball. In three on three situations, everybody is touching the ball. You can kind of dictate what the action is that's gonna to lead to a score. The ball's gotta be touched by the post and kicked back out. The ball has to be touched by all three players on the floor before it can be shot. You gotta drive it into the paint before there can be any outside take. So all of those things, you can start to dictate what actions 
are available. And that's going to get the ball in people's hands. It's also going to get your defense having to play defense in a lot of different ways. So you can see if their athleticism not only translates to what you're trying to do offensively, but does it translate to what you're trying to do on the defensive side of the ball as well. You can also look at the understanding a player has and some of those intangibles and that savviness those will start to come out because there's going to be a lot more space available for players to move. Now, once you've done that, like I said, you do transition to five on five, but that a lot of times for me is more of a conditioner. I'm not evaluating their skill, their athleticism, or how they play the game as much because I've seen that over and over in these small sided games and in the three on three. The five on five is more about running the floor, seeing who's in condition, that sort of thing. So it's more of a conditioning component to the tryouts than it is an evaluation of those big three. So those are all things that you wanna make sure that you're paying attention to. Now the thing that I never leave out of my tryouts is I always have an evaluation sheet for each player. Now I sit down with each player and I let them know these are things that you did well, these are things you need to work on, and then you either made the team or I decided not to keep you this year. Either way, everybody knows that they have some things that they did a good job in. They also know that they have some things to work on. So my best player knows when I sit down with them, these are areas of your game that need to improve. The players that I don't keep, if it's an underclassman who may come out, these are areas you need to improve in order to make it next year. But I make sure that they know what they do well, and then I make sure they know, you know areas that they need to improve on for the next year. So this is all something that I do and have this sheet ready so that they can go home, they can take it with them, and they're not guessing. If a parent has a question, it's typically on the sheet. Uh, if they wanna talk about it, a lot of times I have that sheet that I can refer to because I've made a copy of it, and I can say, this: these are why I made the decisions. It never becomes a, the coach didn't like the player or the coach plays favorites. No, these are this is what I'm seeing. In tryouts, sometimes there are things that you can actually keep score on things like how many made three-pointers or how many uh, buckets you made in a certain period of time, how many down and backs you dribbled if we're doing a, a timed conditioning drill with the ball. There's things like that that give you very concrete numbers. And then there are things that aren't as concrete with, you know, they don't pass the ball as well. They're kind of ball stoppers. You know, they don't have the skill necessary to play or the athleticism to play defense the way that we want to play it. And that's something that I'm seeing more than what I'm actually timing or that I can give them kind of a hard fact about. But they've got the sheet with the things that we did saying this is what I saw and this is, these are the scores you got if I have those. So all of that goes into making sure that if there's ever a question about why I made a decision or if a parent wants to meet and if you've been in the high school game for very long, you know that parents sometimes can um, get pretty upset or pretty into it, especially if their child doesn't make a team. Those are things just to make sure that you have as a safeguard if you need to have that meeting or you need to have that conversation with them. So coach, there is everything in a nutshell, um, as much as I could of how we run tryouts, how we select our teams. And hopefully there's some things there that get kind of the wheels going in your mind and can help you out with how you're gonna do tryouts this year. If you have a, a comment, or if you're seeing this on YouTube, or on Facebook, or any of the social media, leave a comment for me and let me know what you do in your tryouts. What are some things that you found that really work? Do you cut players face-to-face, -face or do you post a list? So I'd love to hear from you. All right, coach, until then, go in the gym and have fun. Thanks.